Welcome back to Fox and Friends. House Democrats reportedly bracing for a turnover in leadership next year if Speaker Pelosi steps down. Far, less Congre far left Congressman Ro Khanna telling the Washington Post, quote, we want leadership that bridges some of the different ideological wings of the party. Whoever it is, I hope they would adopt progressive positions. Fox News contributor and former House Speaker Newt Gingrich is author of the new book, Beyond Biden, and he joins us now. Speaker, welcome and happy new year to you and Callista. Um, let's get right into this. After 19 years, Pelosi is expected to step down. Some people are saying that Hakeem Jeffries is the early favorite. It looks like the debate might be around the leadership, who he, who he or whoever is the leader decides to surround themselves with. Um, will it be the socialists, the communists, the progressives of the party, or will it be the center-left moderates? What are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, this is a very big moment. Uh, Pelosi has been an astonishingly dominant figure. And you have, whether you like her or dislike her, whether you like or dislike her policies, she has been amazingly effective for a very long time. She survived losing the Congress, came back as the minority leader, got to be speaker again. And with a tiny majority, she accomplished things I didn't, as a former speaker, I didn't think were possible. So you at least technically have to have a, a real respect for her professionalism, her toughness, the degree to which she owns the House Democratic Party. Um, when she leaves, so there will be a big vacuum. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries is probably the best positioned. And I think you, the way you phrase it's exactly right. It has to be somebody who has a, a foot in every camp, who has allies who are willing to accept them. Uh, there's a tendency by the news media to greatly overstate the importance of the squad. In fact, the news media in many ways makes AOC and the squad important. Uh, their actual total vote's about six, uh, which is not enough to elect anybody. Uh, but to also recognize this will almost certainly be the minority leader, not the next speaker. And so the question will be in part for the Democrats, who can get us back into a majority? Uh, and that'll be a real test between who can represent the left and who can get us back into a majority, not necessarily the same person. And do you think that Hakeem Jeffries is the best person to do that? For the Democrats, I, I don't think a I don't I don't think a Republican can judge that. I think that he certainly has positioned himself well. He's worked very hard to be broadly acceptable, but there are a number of other players there, and I wouldn't be too surprised to see four or five candidates initially, uh, because they. It's a rare moment of openness. I also suspect that the number two and three slots will also end up being vacated, partially because. When they lose, and I think they will lose this fall, uh, they're going to suddenly face this realization. Uh, who has the drive, the energy, uh, the charisma to get us back to a majority? And I think that's going to be a very different question than if they had a big majority and they were just picking somebody to sustain the majority. They have real problems, and the problems are going to, I think, compound and get worse as they go through this year, partly brought on by Biden, but partly brought on by the fact that they've gotten too far to the left and they don't, they don't really represent the country. Uh, they represent the left wing of their party. And that's um, a very narrow base to try to sustain a majority in the House. Well, let's look ahead um, at 2022. We're looking at Joe Biden's to-do list, and it looks a lot like his 2021 to-do list. It looks like he didn't get a lot done. Uh, so tell me why he didn't get it done and what has to change in order for him to get those items done in 2022. Well, remember, I have, I have a pretty deep bias here. I'm a conservative. I think the policies he adopted are disastrous in the real world. So, you know, he's anti-American energy. The price of gasoline and heating oil go up. Uh, he has uh, launched a program of inflation. People feel it in their pocketbooks every time they go to the store. He's totally failed to meet the logistics supply chain crisis. There's still 90 ships offshore waiting to be offloaded uh, in Southern California. You go through item after item, and, and Biden's problem is the real world. There's still 100,000 plus people coming across the border illegally every month, none of them with COVID checks none of them with criminal record checks. So we're seeing a compounding of reality in ways that I think make it hard for them. Meanwhile, they, they simply took off too big a bite. Uh, their idea of build back uh, better was actually build back a lot bigger, and that's not what the country wants. 
you know, and so I think uh, he's, we're going to see a replay of 2021 with a disastrous result in November for the Democrats. Yeah, looks like it might make a win for the Republicans come midterm. Speaker Gingrich, always a pleasure to get your insights. No one knows more than you on these topics. So Thank you. Happy New Year again to you and Callista. Happy New Year. Take care.